Hey, y'all. Good to be here. It's good to be anywhere, isn't it? It's like so good. We woke up. That's a good thing, isn't it? Say yeah. Come on. Come on, right? Give it up. I am powerless over drugs and alcohol and codependency. My name is Arlene, and today I choose recovery. Hello. Hello. And for me, for me, what choosing recovery means is that I choose to practice uh, a few things that bring me into a relationship with Jesus, who's the one who keeps me safe from my addictions, afflictions, and compulsive behaviors. A choosing recovery for me does not mean that I'm perfect and I will never be. And if you've ever had a conversation with me, you know that's true, right? In fact, I am far from perfect. I'm powerless over drugs and alcohol and codependency. I need help. I need a lot of help. I need help all the time. In fact, I'm here because I'm not all there. And if anybody else is here because they're not all there, it's on the screen. Can we say it together? Go. We're all here because we're not all there. That's right. So if you're new today, if you've never been here today and you're here, but you know you're not all there, um, then you're in the right place because you too can experience recovery uh, even though you're not perfect, even though you're not perfect. You're not perfect, but Jesus is perfect, and he's the one who spans the gap of that for you. He can do for you what you can't do, and I hope you'll choose recovery with all of us here, and we'll walk that journey to wellness together with Jesus because you too can find the help that you need, just like we're finding the help that we need because we just can't do what we just can't do alone, right? Can you say, yeah? Yeah. Absolutely. So anyway, I get asked sometimes, since this is my sobriety month and on November 27th, uh, if I manage to stay away from drugs and alcohol for that long, um, I will celebrate 34 years of sobriety. But still, I get asked sometimes, how come I still go to 12-step meetings? Uh, why am I still always at church doing all of this Jesus stuff? Why am I so focused on working the 12 steps all the time? How come I still call my sponsor? And why am I still so rabid about serving um, or after 34 years? Um, and, and by the way, those things I just talked about, those are the five essentials of recovery. We just talked about them before. There they are. They're on the screen, right? The five essentials. So people ask me, why do you still do this? After 34 years, can't you just take a break? Can't you just take a break? Isn't all of this just a crutch to push you forward into your real life, right? And by the way, yes, I'm, I'm good. Th off the record, this is a crutch. It's a crutch. You know why? Because I am extremely handicapped. <laughs> so I need a crutch badly. Just ask anyone who's paralyzed whether or not they still need the crutch of their cane or their wheelchair. And they'll give you a few strange looks, right? I guarantee you. So anyway, I get asked, I get asked, why do you still do this? Why do you still do this after all this time? And here's the answer. I do this because I'm powerless over what brought me into recovery and I have never regained my own power. I have found the one who has all power and I tap into his mighty power every single day, but I have no personal power on my own. I, I tap into his power through recovery practices that, that showed me the power to begin with all those years ago, and 34 years later, today, I am still as beaten by drugs and alcohol and codependency as I was the day that I crawled into the rooms of recovery. And I believe this, and because I believe this, that's why I stay active in recovery practices, because it's today that I have the problem, not 34 years ago, it's today. And that's why, because I believe that, this, I firmly believe this, that's why I'm still in recovery today. It's not because I have some talent for it. I don't have any talent for recovery, it's just because I keep coming back. That's all, I just keep coming back. And all this time that I've been coming back, I've been watching, always watching, right? Isn't that the Monsters, Inc.? Isn't there a Monsters, Inc. character that says it? Watching, always watching, right? <laughs> I'm, I've been watching. And I've watched some folks give up their recovery practices as they begin to stop feeling 
powerless, right? Their lives get better and they stop feeling powerless, so they give it up, which, by the way, is how you're supposed to feel. You're not supposed to continue to feel hopeless and helpless all through all the years of your recovery. You're supposed to feel better. Your life is supposed to get better. You're not supposed to be hopeless anymore. But I've watched carefully as people whose lives have gotten better and they don't feel hopeless anymore have said, oh, this is, means I, I'm going to stop going to meetings. I, I, don't, I don't need to call my sponsor that much. I don't need to work to 12 steps actively. And, and then they don't sponsor other people or they don't serve and their spiritual life becomes just an hour a week maybe on Sunday or, or on Friday, if that. Uh, they go to meetings maybe every once in a while. A few little prayers thrown up here and there, right? And they're good. And they'll tell you Watch, keep watching. They'll tell you it's because they've grown beyond the program. Or now they have a real life, and they don't have time for recovery. Jobs, relationships, extracurricular activities take the front seat of importance, and recovery continues to move further and further back on the bus. But like I said, I've been watching. And unfortunately, what happens is eventually, slowly, the power that these poor folks once actively sought through God in their recovery programs becomes just a routine. It's just a routine. Eventually they forget what that power even feels like, and little by little, or all at once, they again begin to experience despair. And even if they don't completely relapse into old behaviors, they certainly don't grow. And then they begin to stagnate, and they wonder, how come recovery doesn't work? How come recovery doesn't work? Sometimes they e even start wondering why God doesn't work. And they drift away from him, too. Don't let this happen to you. Don't let this happen to you. Because recovery through Jesus is a way of life. It's a beautiful way. Don't forget your need for the program to keep delighting you and revealing new adventures, which it will do. The re recovery, the program, it's a need, like air or water. It's not an extra, like chocolate. But okay, chocolate is a bad example because I know chocolate is a need. I get that. But, but you, you get what I'm saying, right? You get what I'm saying here? Okay, you, you get the drift. So that brings us to step 11 today. Today we're going to talk about step 11. 11th month, step 11. It's November, step 11. Step 11 is the sort of step um, that you can begin to work on immediately, even if you're brand new. The, the steps are in order for a reason, yes, but step 11 is something that you can begin doing uh, now, even if you're not on it. And, and it's also the step that, as we stay in the program year after year, it keeps us growing in understanding and connection with Jesus. Remember, we need God's power to overcome what ails us, right? And step 11 helps you to be more and more connected with God, who you need. It's not a maintenance step at all. Who wants maintenance? Maintenance doesn't sound very exciting to me. I don't want maintenance. That's not compelling. I want to grow. It's a growing step. We grow closer to God, who's our Savior and our friend. You want to grow, right? Say, yeah, please. So let's stay. Let's say step 11 together. It's on the screen. There you go. Go. Step 11. We saw it through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. So today we're going to answer this simple question. If you open your folder, let's, you, you, you might as well fill in some of these blanks because when you go into your group tonight, it's a topic. That's what you're going to talk about, so you might as well remember what those blanks are because that's going to be really hard to talk about them if you don't remember them, right? Say yeah. yeah. Okay, so today we're going to answer this simple question. How can I get to know God better? We need to get to know him better. And this step shows two ways. We're going to look at them today. And I promise you that if you grow in these two practices we're going to talk about today, you will know God better. And he will reveal amazing things to you all throughout your life. And then you won't have to, have to practice this step. You're, you're going to want to practice this step. You're, you're not going to have to do these spiritual practices. You're going to want to do them. And the more peace and contentment you experience, the more you'll want to, and the fuller your life will be, and you won't fall away. So how can I get to know God? A couple of practices we're going to talk about. First way, I can get to know God better through prayer. The first fill-in is prayer. Now, don't roll your eyes at the simplicity of this. 
You know, it's like, oh yeah, prayer. No, 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 it's prayer. Prayer is how we consciously communicate with God. God, like who made like the heaven and earth and the universe and stuff. Like that's a big deal, don't you think? That we get to communicate with God. Prayer is how we do that. And you know what? Even Jesus needed to pray all through the Bible. You see Jesus going off to talk to his loving father, asking him what to do next, fill, you know, asking him to be filled with his power. Even Jesus prayed. So write this down. Prayer is talking to God. Prayer is talking to God. That's all prayer is. That's what it is. Read this Bible verse about prayer with me. It's on the screen. Go. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he's done. Philippians 4, 6. You know, if you wonder how to pray, that's a pretty good instruction up there. Tell God what you need. Thank him for what he's done. Boom. Prayer is just you chatting with God about all sorts of things. But here's a problem I have with prayer. I have a problem with prayer. I really do. Uh, And maybe you can relate to it. Maybe you have this problem too. I tend to overthink things. Any other overthinkers out there? Maybe you can make some noise if you're an overthinker, right? Here's what I do. I try to pray the way God wants me to pray. And then I get all messed up, right? I say the things that I think he wants me to say, and then I realize I'm doing that. Oh, wait, I'm saying the things he wants me to say. So I tell him, oops, sorry, God. And I try to get more real, right? And then I fall into some other form of trying to manipulate God. (laughs) I need to continually remind myself that prayer, prayer, it's not a rule I'm following. It's a relationship I'm seeking. It's not a rule that I'm following. I have to pray. I'm seeking a relationship with God. It's me plugging into God. You know, God already knows me. I'm not summoning God with my prayer. He he already knows me. He's already here. It's me plugging into him because God already knows me. He knows all my needs. He knows the good of me, the bad of me, and the ugly of me. I, I I don't need to have to tell him any of that stuff. I don't need to impress him. He knows me. There's no way to pray that's gonna make him more or less likely to answer my prayers or like me more or less or anything. Prayer is for me to know God more. It's me paying attention to him, not him paying attention to me. So I don't have to be fancy. I don't have to say the right thing. God already knows me. He has all my situations under control. Now, let's read this Bible verse together. It's one of my favorites. It's on the screen. Go. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 and 17. So when I pray, I experience God because I pay attention to God. And I need God all the time to keep in recovery because I'm powerless on my own. I think I've already made that clear, right? I'm powerless, I need God. So if I'm powerless, I I need God all the time. So it stands to reason that I need to pray all the time. And, And in this verse, it says, pray without ceasing. So if you're an underliner, underline pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Well, If you're like me, when you think about praying without ceasing, that sounds a little daunting, doesn't it? It sounds a little daunting because I can barely get five minutes of prayer in before I'm making a shopping list in my head, right? Or worse yet, I drift to how I'm going to give somebody that I'm having trouble with a piece of my mind, right? I mean, if I can't even stay out of sin when I'm praying, I'm in big trouble, right? Last week, I read this in a blog, and it struck me, and maybe it'll help you too when we think about praying without ceasing. And this is what the blogger said. The blogger said, in the 19th century, there was a group of men headed up by John Newton that met once a month for theological discussions. They addressed one theological question every month. Now, this was one of their questions for one month's discussion, namely, what does it mean to pray without ceasing? Well, they batted around for about 45 minutes and couldn't come to a satisfactory answer. Finally, there was a maid who walked into the room and was serving. One of the ministers casually said to this Scottish maid girl, maybe you can tell us what it means to pray without ceasing. And she said to them, oh, sirs, that's not a problem. When I get up in the morning and I clothe myself, I pray that the Lord Jesus might clothe me with his righteousness today. When I came down here and I cleaned the furniture, I prayed that he might cleanse me from the filth of my soul. 
When I set before you this food and drink, I prayed that Jesus might be my meat and drink all day long, nourishing me. So sirs, whatever I'm doing, I just kind of pray my way through the day. And I think that's what it means to pray without ceasing. And you know what, I agree. I agree, I think that's what it means too. We can cultivate the habit of turning to God no matter what we're doing. You know, I've been praying a lot lately. I've been really, really having to pray a lot lately, even though my prayers have been mostly for the same thing. I've been praying for my son, who's in active addiction again. I've been praying for my grandchildren and for my daughter-in-law. I've been praying for my other son, who I haven't heard from in so many months. But you know what? I've also been thanking God for their lives. I've been thanking God for their lives. And, and, and then I've been praying because my beloved ex-mother-in-law, who was like a mom to me, passed away. I'm grieving her. And I was, as I was praying for comfort this past week, God showed me a plaque hanging somewhere that said, what a sweet gift it is to be given someone who mattered so much to you that you miss them when they're gone. And I thank God for this because it was a gift I never would have noticed had I not been praying. Cultivate a life of prayer. Prayer is one way to grow closer to God, whose power you need, by the way, because you're powerless, right? And here's the other way we're going to talk about today. Number two, I can get to know God better through meditation. I can get to know God better through meditation. Step 11 suggests prayer and meditation. Now, meditation, it may sound like some new agey thing, like some weird, you know, thing, like a self-help strategy or something like that, but but really it's not. If prayer is talking to God, then meditation is listening to God. It's listening to God, so fill that in. A lot of times I hear people wonder what God wants them to do or what God is saying to them, and I'd like to challenge each and every one of you to listen to God. If you ever wonder what God's saying to you, listen to him, actively listen to him. The question I like to ask of myself and others is how much time Am I spending listening to TV, radio, my friends, the internet, myself, the phone, whatever, and how much time am I, am I actually spending listening to God? And if I'm honest, <laughs> not nearly as much, so why do I wonder at my confusion when I don't actively listen? If you really want to get close to God, who you need to stay in recovery and to grow, then you're going to have to know what he's saying. So it's good to begin the practice of listening. Now, I sponsor people, and here's something that often happens in sponsorship situations. I don't know. I've, I've, been, I've been guilty of doing it, and, and I've had it done to me, okay? Even though I was maybe asked to be a sponsor because the person needs a guide through the program of recovery, what will actually happen is the person will call me up, Hi, Arlene. And talk, 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 talk. And then they'll tell, 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 tell. And then they'll decide, 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 decide. And then they'll say, hey, I got to go. Thanks for your time. And they hang up. I probably haven't gotten like, you know, three words of guidance in there, right? That's what can happen with me and Jesus if I'm not careful. I can dial him up in prayer and talk and talk and talk and tell and tell and tell and decide and decide and decide and then thank him in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> and I want him to stop to you know, find out what he might be telling me. This is what Jesus himself says about this. Read it with me. It's from Luke. It's from the Gospel of Luke, uh, chapter 11, verse 28. It's on the screen. Go. Jesus replied, but even more blessed are all who hear the word of God and put it into practice. Luke eleven twenty eight. So praying is necessary, yes. But when we listen, that's when we get blessed. That's when we get blessed. Now at first, listening to God may seem like a hard thing to do because it takes a lot of discipline. Uh, it takes a lot of discipline, and sometimes we think, okay, well, how I'm going to listen to God is I'm just going to sit there in nature or whatever, and, you know, the birds are going to sing, and, you know, God is going to descend like a dove, and he's going to talk to me. And there's a lot of different ways to practice meditation, listening to God, and sitting in nature and doing that. It may be one of, one of the ways that you like uh, to do that. Uh, it may be God may speak to you through, through people. There's a lot of ways. However, there's one way that God will always speak to you. 
He will always, always speak to you if you begin this practice and this discipline. And the discipline is to get into the Bible. It's to read the Bible. You know, at first, reading the Bible feels like a, an impossible discipline. There's something, that, that if, if you're new, if you're new, you may feel like, it, it, I can't do this. I, I can't do it. It's a challenge. But I guarantee you that there's something about reading the Bible that reveals what God is saying like nothing else does. If you're new, I'd start in the New Testament. That's the last third of the Bible. The four Gospels written by the four friends of Jesus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Right? These are the four books that are written about Jesus and has the words of Jesus, usually in red. Right? And, 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 and it's in those books that you will find Jesus talking to you. So if you're having a challenge hearing God, if anybody's sitting there saying, I'm just having a challenge hearing God, give it a whirl. Spend some time in the Bible. Honestly, no kidding. I'm not kidding. This is real. The longer I stay sober, the more time I spend listening to Jesus in the words of Scripture. It's not a chore. It's a lifeline. But at first, it feels like a chore. And that's okay. That's okay. But I want, I want to tell you something about feeling like it's a chore. Just know that where there's good, there's evil, right? Where there's recovery, there's addictions, afflictions, and compulsive behaviors trying to get us down, right? And so whether you call it the devil, whether you call it evil, whether you call it bad, whatever, whatever you call it, there is always something trying to bring us down, right? Always. <laughs> and so it is the devil's, it's that intention, it's the devil's intention to make hearing from God through the Bible a chore for you. So when it feels like a chore, just know who you're hearing from. It's not God. It's from anti-God. Because the devil would like nothing better than for you not to hear from God and to go on in mediocrity, never experiencing the full power of a relationship with Jesus. He'd like nothing better than that. So I suggest to you tonight, push past all the excuses and the apathy towards opening that book and begin to read and listen to God. You will. There's lots of other ways to do it, but you know what? That's one way that will always work. When you leave today, go out to the lobby. You can get one of these. It says dive deep. You know the big clock that's hanging on the wall in the lobby? Right underneath the big clock, there's a whole bunch of these. And what it is, it's a Bible reading plan of how you can get started. Even if you've never read the Bible before, there's a beginner plan, an intermediate plan, and an advanced plan. Any, 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 for any level of Bible readers. And then get a notebook. And then begin to write down what God is saying to you when you read. Now, there are a million excuses for not doing this. And I know because I have used about 999,999 of them myself. But remember, the devil is at the root of them. These excuses are common. You're, you're going to be tempted to use them. I don't have time. I don't read well. I don't write well. But I'm here to tell you that excuses don't change the fact that knowing Jesus is necessary for you to grow in your recovery, it, that, that's necessary. And this is a way that you can get to know him. Without him, you're toast. Remember, you're powerless. You're powerless, and it's only through God will you continue to have the power to recover. So excuses to not know him better don't really make sense if you think about it. Knowing him better is the core of our life. It's like making excuses of why you don't really need to breathe today. I'll do that tomorrow or some other time, right? Now I'm going to call the band back up. Um, and as they're going to come back up, I want to remind us, as though we don't know, that this coming Thursday is Thanksgiving. Gobble, gobble, right? At Monday Choose Recovery, this Monday at the Central Campus, we're going to talk more about being thankful in our recovery. But for today... Uh, we're going to close this lesson on prayer and meditation uh, with this. I want us to look at the two scriptures that we mentioned earlier. I, I want us to look at them together. And in fact, um, as we look at them, why don't we stand together to do that? Why don't we stand together to look at them? That's great. That's great. Let's read them together. They're on the screen. Go. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need. 
and thank him for all he's done. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances. Now I want you to notice something, there's no accident here. Giving thanks is intimately linked to getting to know better, getting to know God better. Think, think, think of what he has given you with no strings attached. No strings attached. Think about it. Your recovery, he just gave it to you. His power, you don't deserve it. His acceptance and his love. Free gift, your new life. You know, a God like this is someone that you're gonna wanna stick very close to. So may this Thanksgiving be your conviction to grow closer to God through prayer and meditation, seeking only the knowledge of his will for you and the power to carry that out. May it be your conviction to follow the path of recovery he's given you with more determination than ever to his glory. You know, the altar is open. This altar is always open at this point in time to come. And I ask that you come and give thanks or ask him for what you need. Either way, come and give thanks or ask him for what you need. Both of those things are good. And if you need someone to pray with you, just raise a hand. Our prayer team is here to help pray for you. The altar is going to be open as the band plays.